Metabolic syndrome has six components. Abdominal obesity is the third component. Abdominal obesity, otherwise known as visceral obesity, can be measured very simply. The first being measuring the waist. If the waist circumference, WC, is greater than 40 inches in men or 35 inches in women, this is a measure of obesity. Another simple measure is the waist to hip ratio. The waist should be smaller than the hips. If the waist is equal to or greater than the hips, this is obesity. In fact, if your waist is 85% or more of your hips for men, this is obesity. Women have a slightly uh, larger grace. They have 90%. So if the waist is 90% or more of the measure of the hips, this is an indication of obesity. And lastly, the BMI, body mass index. Body mass index is a measure that's been out for a while, and it basically measures the percentage of body fat. If the body fat index is 30% or more, then this is an uh, indication of obesity. Uh, body fat percentage of 29% in men is a clear cut indication of obesity. The norm should be 16% or less. A body fat percentage of 37% in women is an indication of obesity. And the body fat percentage ideally for women should be less than 22%. I do want to say that the, body, the BMI and its relation to the risk factors for cardiovascular disease, having a heart attack, uh, are, do not, it doesn't take into account bone density and muscularity, but it is definitely a good starting point and a goal to, uh, towards which we need to try to strive. Um, it will take some time to actually get to a healthy weight. So using these measures to get started is an excellent way an excellent source to um, definitely, for one, define, yes, I have obesity, I need to take action, and two, what are the goals that I should be striving toward? Right now, we're looking at a body mass index chart, a BMI chart, and you can go on websites and they will actually show you a BMI calculator. And all the calculator is really doing is doing exactly what we're going to do with this chart here the bmi chart has three components bmi the bmi result across the top here the weight column over here and well the weight column is over here the height column is over here so for for instance if a person is five feet seven inches that would be 67 inches you just go over to the right find their weight so if the person is 159 pounds, go directly up. That person has a body mass index of 25. And in the next slide, I'll actually show what the categories are for the various uh, body mass indexes and what the associated uh, health risks are. Let's do another example. The, that same person is uh, five feet seven inches 67 inches in total and they gain some weight they get up to 191 pounds so now uh, 191 pounds we go up their body mass index is now 30 and as I stated in the prior slide a uh, body mass index of 30 is the definition of obesity just based on BMI. So let's go to the next slide. Here we have a table with metabolic syndrome and BMI. And what this table was trying to depict here is how BMI is classified and the interaction of the actual BMI and the actual waist measurement more precisely predicts the risk of associated disease, such as having a heart attack, hypertension, diabetes, and even cancer. So let's take a closer look at how this actually works. In the example before, the, the fictitious person we described 
had a BMI of 25. That would put that person as an overweight individual. If the person has a waistline of 40 or less for a male, 35 or less for a female, that would put that person at an increased risk for developing those uh, cardiovascular and uh, other diseases. If, on the other hand, a person has a large amount of visceral obesity, the abdominal obesity, that waistline is greater than 40 for a man or greater than 35 for a woman, that would put that person at a very, at a high risk for developing these uh, associated diseases. And in that same example, that individual became caught up into the typical American lifestyle of overworked, under-exercised, and overstressed, and put on a lot of weight. He went up to a BMI of 30, which put him into a obese category, and if he had the 40-inch waistline or less, that would put him in a high risk for developing the associated diseases. If he had a lot of uh, a visceral obesity, abdominal obesity, and the waist is greater than 40 for the male, is a very high risk for developing, again, hypertension, cardiovascular problems, uh, problems with uh, having a stroke, diabetes, insulin resistance, dyslipidemia, etc., etc. All of those associated diseases are at a very high risk when a person becomes obese at 30. So it even it just gets worse if the BMI increases to extremely high. And I I point this out to make make it absolutely clear that be, be, when once a person becomes obese, this is dangerous territory because patients have very poor prognosis once they have obesity. It is very difficult to lose weight. And in fact, less than 30% of patients actually lose 20 pounds or more. And then out of those people, half of those do not keep the weight off for over a year. So this is not a topic that we want to take lightly.